Good health to all from Rexall. Yes, it's Sunday. Time for the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Presented by the makers of Rexall Drug Products and your Rexall family drugger. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist, taking a little time from behind the prescription counter this Sunday evening to speak for all 10,000 of us, the 10,000 druggists who have added the word Rexall to our own store names. You can always tell us by the orange and blue Rexall sign in our windows. The sign means that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. They range all the way from aspirin to penicillin, and they're as fine and pure and dependable as science can make them. We recommend them to our customers because we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. Last week, Alice noticed that her clothes were getting tight on her, and she decided to go on a special health diet. She feels the diet is not only good for herself, but also for Phil and the children. And the family has been on this imposed diet for five days now. Alice, do we have to eat this stuff for lunch again? What's wrong with it? Well, look at it. Raw carrots, vegetable juice, dried fruit, herbs, and celery tonic. <laughs> Can I have something that tastes good like a hunk of blubber? <laughs> I'm getting weak from eating this stuff. And look at the kids. They're wasting away to a shadow. Oh, stop exaggerating. This health food is good for them. Children, eat your lunch. Alice, pick up your fork and start eating. Yes, Mommy. Daddy. Yes? Help me lift my little arm. <laughs> Now, you see what I mean? They're weak, and no wonder. They're practically living on raw carrots. Carrots for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Look at Phyllis. She's so weak, she can hardly keep her little pink eyes open. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Carrots will never do her any harm. Now, Phyllis, start eating. Phyllis, I'm talking to you. Eh, uh, what's up, Doc? <laughs> up to this. Dr. Crail says this diet is very healthy, and I'm going to stay on it until I lose weight. I can't understand. Why do you have to lose weight? My clothes don't fit me. I'm getting fat. Well, it isn't noticeable. Oh, it isn't? No, you don't look any fatter to me than usual. <laughs> what was that? Hand me my nine iron, Caddy. I got to get out of this trap. <laughs> oh, look, honey, what I mean is, is well, you're not fat at all. In fact, you're much more slender than any matron your age. <laughs> matron? You better tee off again, Daddy. You lifted your head on that one. <laughs> Look, Alice, believe me, you're just as slender as you ever were. Just how much weight did you put on anyway? Oh, I don't know. I'm afraid to step on a scale and find out. You're on a diet and you don't know how much you weigh? Well, I give up. I just don't understand you women. You're a mimigma to me. <laughs> Philip, the word is enigma. <laughs> I'm using the feminine tense. <laughs> Smarty, where'd you come from, Willie? The door was open, so I walked in. Hello, Alice. Good morning, Philip. <laughs> We've talked already. for lunch. Won't you have something? Yes. Would you care to share a herb with us? <laughs> no, thank you. I just finished a delicious lunch. I had a hot roast beef sandwich with mashed potatoes and gravy and apple pie. Cut it out! <laughs> I haven't had a decent meal since Alice put us all on that Dr. Crail's health diet. 
I'm telling you, Willie, it's killing me. But Dr. Crail's health food's a wonderful filler. I ate nothing else for three months, and they did wonders for me. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why, you wouldn't believe it, but when I, when I went to Dr. Crail, I was a 98-pound weakling, and look at my physique today. Yeah, 102 pounds of solid nothing. <laughs> look, if your sister wants to go on a diet, that's her business, but why do I have to go on it? Because you can stand it. You're getting a little flabby yourself. Flabby? How can you say that to me? Me, a perfect streamlined specimen of American manhood. <laughs> Streamlining is beginning to sag a little <laughs> You're getting a double chin That ain't no double chin It's just that my face has so much good looks It overlaps <laughs> Hey, Alice, I can't take any more of this I gotta have some food I'm, I, I'm just a bag of bones now Oh, you are not No, then how come every time I step out in the backyard The dog tries to bury me? <laughs> I don't care what you say I'll go to the kitchen There must be something in the cupboard I can eat Hmm Not even a can of anything left Just herbs, dried fruit, pablum, carrots Pablum? <laughs> That's the stuff Alice used to feed the kids when they were babies. How come we got baby food? I wonder if... Hey, if this stuff's good for babies, it ought to be good for me. I'm going to try some. Hey, that don't taste bad. Hi, Curly. Oh, hello, Frankie. Alice told me you're in here What are you doing? Eating Eating what? Pablum <laughs> Oh Kichiku <laughs> Remley, stop pinching my cheek. <laughs> Sit down, I want to talk to you. I don't want to bother you now. I'll come back after your two o'clock feeding. <laughs> so what's the idea of eating pablum? Well, I got to eat something nourishing. Alice is on a diet. And put me on it, too. Yeah? Look, Frankie, I'm so hungry, I'm desperate. You are, huh? Yesterday, I wrote to my congressman to see if I couldn't get in on the Marshall Plan. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I got here at an opportune moment. That's what I come over to see about. Our pal Bill Chilius is opening a restaurant tonight. It's going to be televised, and he wants stars like you and Alice there. A restaurant? Huh? <laughs> With food? Yeah. <laughs> hey, how would you like to sink your teeth into a big, juicy sirloin smothered with onions? French fried potatoes and creek. Curly, stop chewing on my arm. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Look, Frankie, I'd love to go to that restaurant opening, but Alice won't go and she won't let me go either. She says we're going to stay on this diet until she loses weight. Curly, you don't know how to handle women. All you got to do is flatter her, make her think she lost weight. Yeah, yeah, good enough, but suppose she steps on the scale and finds out she hasn't. Well, you could be prepared for that exigency. <laughs> no, I couldn't. Why not? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Look, all you gotta do is set the scale back Set the scale? Hey, hey, you got something Yeah, sure, set it back <laughs> Hey, look, I'll go in and fix the scale right now Now, all you gotta do is flatter Alice into weighing herself Now, nah, don't I'll worry, set it don't back. worry I'll flatter her into thinking she's the most slender thing that ever stepped on a scale And she'll... What are you fellas doing in here so long? Where's Phil, Frankie? Somebody talking to me? <laughs> Did somebody just come in? It's me, Alice. Oh, there you are. Huh? <laughs> I didn't see you. You're so thin, you're hardly noticeable when you stand sideways. <laughs> oh, stop trying to tell me that... <laughs> you think I'm thin? Definitely. I imagine when you take a shower, if you don't stand in the right position, you don't get wet. <laughs> 
Frankie, right. let's not overdo this. I think that I... Hey, I... Frankie, I got everything all fixed. I set the... Oh, oh, hello, Alice. You set what, Phil? My hair. <laughs> I just washed it, and it's a mass of ringlets. Phil, <laughs> Phil, you know, Frankie thinks I look slender. Certainly. So does everybody else. That's what I've been telling you. If you'd only weigh yourself, you'd see that we're right, too. All right, I'll do it. I'll go in and see. Yeah, we'll go with you. Hey, Curly, the scale's fake. Like a crooked slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alice. Now, look, get right up on the scale. All right. Right, right okay. up there. That's yeah. it. There. Gee, I'm afraid to look. What does the scale say? How much do I weigh? Uh, 32 and three quarters pounds. <laughs> 32 and three quarters? Well, that's with your clothes on, honey. You don't really weigh... 32 and three quarters? <laughs> Well, Curly, you fixed the grate. I can't understand it. I just set that knob back a little. Oh, I... I might have known it was just a trick to get me off my diet. Just for that, I'm going out and buy another month's supply of that health food. Oh, Goodbye, no, boys. Oh, no, not another month of that stuff. Sometimes I wonder why I ever became a married man. <laughs> There's so many other things I could have been. When I was young, I had about a million aspirations, hopes and expectations, things I thought I'd be. A fireman, an actor, a farmer with a tractor, an acrobat, a crooner, a captain of a schooner. Then I wanted to be president. But now I'm kind of hesitant because when I look around, the things I see, they don't appeal to me. So, you know, I, I want to be a goldfish, a happy little goldfish. Believe me, life would be a bowl of thrills. No need to be a scholar, no need to earn a dollar, don't have to lift a gill to pay your bills. Why, they haven't any troubles, and life's a bowl of bubbles, cause romantically they're always in the mood. For when a little he fish pursues a little she fish, not once does she resent his attitude. Why, he's never in hot water about some fish's daughter, so don't blame me if I wish I were a goldfish. That's what I want to be, a goldfish. Just a happy little goldfish. Believe me, that's a life of ease and class. Why, it's oh so hunkadory in manners piscatory to wave your finny in a bowl of glass. Now, they think their life is dreary now. In fact, it's very cheery. Why, they giggle just by wiggling their tails. Their music, though aquatic, from swing to operatic, they get by playing up and down their scale. Why, no golf to throw your stance off, no news to scare your pants off. Don't blame me if I wish I were a goldfish. No dentist makes you holler, no doctor pills to swallow, no rheumatiz to lay you up in bed. Listen to this. You snare a golden cutie, it ain't her father's duty to grab a gun and fill you full of lead. So until this world of taxes gets back upon its axes, Please, just for a little while, I want to be a goldfish. Hey, how is that, Frankie? Curly, you're right. You're from hunger. <laughs> so what, what you need is a good meal. How about coming to that restaurant tonight? I just got through town telling you that Alice ain't gonna let me. I ain't gonna get a square meal again until her clothes fit her. You... Until her clothes fit her? That's huh? right. I uh, think I have a solution. Hold it a minute. <laughs> just hold it a minute now. Don't come in with another one of them extremities or strikers. <laughs> well, listen to me. Look, if we fixed Alice's clothes so that they fit her again, she'd think her weight was normal and she'd start eating. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah Hey, hmm? if the dresses are tight All we gotta do is let them out Open a few seams That's it You go up and get Alice's dresses And I'll get the sewing machine ready Okay <laughs> Hey, Frankie, now please be careful, yeah. will you? These are Alice's best dresses All right, let me have them Wait a minute, Frankie What? Look at me. Yeah. Are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> Don't I always? I know how to handle this stuff. First thing I do is open the seam. Just a little. Very carefully. <laughs> Ramley, look what you did. Don't worry. That's just the first step. Now what do we do? Face the hem. 
We what? Baste the ham. You know what that means, don't you? Of course I do. What do you think I am, stupid or something? <laughs> what good is it going to do to pour gravy all over the dish? <laughs> Curly, your ignorance is amazing. <laughs> Basting the hem means letting out the waste. <laughs> oh, it does? Sure. I thought they called that pleading the peblum. <laughs> the same thing. Well, how much, how much should we let the waste out? Not much. About five inches. <laughs> Let's make it ten and be on the safe side. <laughs> okay. I'll stitch it up. There we go. I'll have this thing finished in no time. Do it carefully. Get a nice, straight... Whoa, line. is it ain't base of the sewing machine, girl? Oh! <laughs> oh, darn you, Judas. You made me run the needle over my finger. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're the first guy I ever seen with a hemstitch cuticle. <laughs> Look, Julius, will you go away? We're busy. What are you doing? We're basting a hem. Oh. You got any time out on Tuesday? I got a bodice that needs flaring. <laughs> Let's do it right now, Curly. Okay, put him over my knee and I'll flare his little bodice. <laughs> what are you guys doing with Miss Faye's dresses? If you must know, she's put on some weight and we're letting them out about ten inches. Ten inches? You mean she's that fat? This is the end of everything. <laughs> My dream boat has become a barge. <laughs> she's not that fat. Just as her clothes are getting a little tight on her. You're just saying that to make me feel better. <laughs> Tell me the truth. How fat is she? Now look, Julius, don't... Son, give it to me straight. I can take it. <laughs> is her obesity obnoxious? Will you stop that? I keep on trying to... Is her who what? <laughs> so that's why she hasn't been in to buy groceries lately. She's ashamed to be seen. All right, all right. Have it your own way. She hasn't been out of the house because she can't get through the front door. Now get lost, will you? All right, I'll go. This is a severe blow. Oh, Bill, where are you? Uh-oh, it's Fatso. <laughs> Quick, Frankie, yeah. Frankie, hide the dresses under the sewing machine and cover it up. Hurry okay. up, here All she right. comes. Right. Bill, will you and Frankie come out and help me? Well, don't stand there. You guys go out and help her. You must be wedged between something. <laughs> I'm leaving by the back door. I just can't stand to see her waddle in. Goodbye. <laughs> Waddle in. To hear him talk, you'd think that she Help was... Help me with these bundles, will you, fellas? Oh, oh, hi, Alice. You're back, huh? Hey, Alice, did you bring home one little steak for me? No. Dr. Crail doesn't believe in steaks. <laughs> now, please, carry these bundles in the kitchen. Oh, huh? come on, Frankie. All right. Dr. Crail doesn't believe in steaks. <laughs> Dr. Crail. Crail. Guy probably eats nothing else. When nobody's watching. Yeah. If Alice saw the guy eating a steak, that'd get her off of him. Well, wait a minute. I think I can arrange it so Alice will see him eating one. See him eating one? Yeah. You How? know, I told you they're televising the opening of Chilius's restaurant. All you've got to do is invite this doctor to have dinner with you there and have a steak put right down in front of him. Yeah, I get it. You see? Alice sees all this on... Our television set. That's it. I'll stay here to make sure she tunes into the right station. You better get going, Curly. You haven't got much time. Okay, I'll call the doctor right now and tell him to meet me at the restaurant at six. Okay, goodbye, Curly. If Alice asks me goodbye, if um, if Alice asks me, I've, I've gone. I'll, I'll tell her that I had to meet Jackson. Okay, see you. Goodbye, Curly. All right, goodbye. Hey, thanks for the idea, Frank. You bet. Goodbye. I kind of hate to leave. Well, Go goodbye. Goodbye, Curly. <laughs> Great. Wait till Alice sees this doctor eating a steak. What's keeping you fellas so long? Where's Phil? Phil. Oh, Phil. Ha he had to leave. He had an urgent phone call to go over and see Jack Benny. Oh. Oh, gee, I hope he's back in time for dinner. Yeah, well, he will be. Uh, do you mind if I stay around, Alice? There's a television show on at 6 o'clock that I want to see. Okay. But if you'll excuse me now, I have to go and get dinner ready. Okay. <laughs> East and 
West is West and the wrong one I have chose. Let's go where I'll keep on wearing those frills and flowers and buttons and bows and rings and things and buttons and bows. Don't bury me in this prairie, take me where the seamen grow. Let's move down to some big town where they love a gal with the cut of her clothes and I'll stand out in buttons and bows. We'll love you in buckskin or skirts that you homespun. Oh, but I love you longer, stronger, where your friends don't tote a gun. My bones denounce the buckboard bounce and the cactus hurts my toes. Let them moose wig out, keep using those silks and satins and linen that shows, and I'm all yours with buttons and bows. <laughs> Cause the city's where I feel at home And not the lone prairie My bones denounce the buckboard bounce And the cactus hurt my toes Let them moose wig out Keep using the silk and satins and linen that shows And I'm all yours in buttons and boats Give me Easter trip Where women are women in high silk hose And peekaboo clothes and fresh perfume That rocks the room And I'm all yours well, I'm so happy you're able to come to the opening of my restaurant, Mr. Harris. Is uh, Mrs. Harris going to join you? No, she couldn't make it, Chilius. You see, I'm having dinner with my doctor. Oh, I, oh, I hope there's nothing wrong. No, no, it's just a little matter of... Uh... I beg your pardon. You're Mr. Harris, aren't you? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dr. Crail's associate. I'm Dr. Carlson. You're Dr. <laughs> but I thought... A beautiful girl like you, uh... Shall I draw the curtains, Mr. Harris? No! <laughs> Chillies, it's not what you think. This is my doctor. Of course. <laughs> Sick like that, I should be. <laughs> Dr. Crail couldn't make it, Mr. Harris. I hope you're not disappointed in my being here. Well, uh, You I... don't mind having dinner with me, do you? I'll force myself. <laughs> Forgive me, Alice, this was thrust upon me. <laughs> Hey, Alice, where do you see this television show? Why are you so anxious for me to see it? Well, you'll find out you're in for quite a surprise. <laughs> you're going to see something that'll just... Be... Oh, good, good. It's coming on now. Wait till I get the picture a little clearer. There, now sit back. You're going to enjoy this, Good evening, Alice. ladies and gentlemen of the television audience. Yeah. Welcome to the opening of Chilius's Restaurant, located on Hollywood's famous strip. We have quite a few celebrities dining here tonight. I see Edgar Bergen, Ray Milland, Ida Lupino, Sonny Tuff, and Phil Harris. Phil Harris? What's Phil doing in that restaurant? Oh, Jackson must have taken him to dinner. And now, without further ado, we take our camera and microphone to our nearest table, and I see it's the well-known orchestra leader and radio star, Phil Harris, and the charming dinner companion. Hey, look, Alice, it's Curly, and... and... that's Jack Benny? <laughs> Jack looks stunning in a strapless <laughs> evening gown. Well, this is a very dull show. I better turn it off. You so much as touch that doll and I'll break your guitar arm. <laughs> I want to hear Phil explain this. Well, here we are at Mr. Harris's table. Uh, Mr. Harris, do you mind if we interview you? Oh, no, no, not at all. Oh, this is thrilling. Uh, the television camera is right on us. Yes, sir, right this minute. We're being seen in thousands of homes. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, oh! I forgot it's being televised. Alice, I can explain everything, honey. This girl is my doctor. Oh, come now, Curly. Alice, I didn't know she was going to show up. I was expecting somebody else. My mother told me I should never trust a drummer. <laughs> Phil Harris, you're not.
nothing but a philander, a rake, an old ruin. I am not. You're not. What? <laughs> Whatever my wife is calling me. Your wife? You mean this, this girl isn't it? And, and your, your wife is watching? Uh, shall I draw the curtain, Mr. Harris? Yes. I mean, no. no. <laughs> Alice, this isn't my fault. Frankie arranged this, didn't you, Frankie? Only up to a point. You're ad lib in this part. Oh, Alice. <laughs> Alice, Alice, please don't go away. I'll be right home to explain everything, honey. Oh, I feel sick. Oh. Lucky he's got his doctor with him. Hmm. <laughs> you just wait till he gets home. <laughs> And Alice, that's the whole story. Now, please believe me. Instead of Dr. Crail showing up, he sent his assistant. I don't believe you. Oh, Frankie, make her understand. You believe me, don't you, pal? No. (laughs) (laughs) Alice, honey, you've got to believe me. You know I wouldn't even look at another woman. I've seen you look. Oh. (laughs) Alice, honey, look, if you don't believe me, call Dr. Crail and ask him. He'll tell you that he sent her over. Well... If you're willing to let me do that, I... I guess I was a little hasty. Oh, then you do believe me? Yes, Phil, I'm convinced. I'm not. (laughs) But Frankie, honey, I tell you, darling... Oh, shut up! Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Now, let's listen while a mother asks a question of her neighborhood druggist. Just the other day, I completely cleaned out our family medicine cabinet, and I'd like to get your advice on refilling it. Well, ma'am, speaking as a family druggist, I'd be sure I filled it with reliable drug products. But that's just it. How can I know when I'm buying reliable drug products? Just be sure the name Rexall is on the label. Well, you say that like a man who knows what he's talking about. Well, ma'am, we Rexall druggists do know. We've actually seen the way 2,000 or more drug products made by Rexall are tested over and over again before they're considered good enough to wear the Rexall label. And we've seen the day-in and day-out research in Rexall's big laboratories that stand behind that label. That's why we know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Mister, you've got a customer. Uh, Can I get these products anywhere? Oh, no, ma'am. Only at Rexall stores, the stores with the orange and blue Rexall sign in the window. Good health to all from Rexall. Phil, I have some news for you. We don't have to stay on that diet anymore. Well, hallelujah. (laughs) And ziggity zing. Hey, you mean you lost enough weight? Well, Phil, I I never gained any. Never gained? But you said your clothes were pretty tight on you. I know. I know, but the dry cleaner just called and said he's been trying a new cleaning fluid and it shrank all of my clothes. Oh, no. Automatic saving is sure saving. Buy U.S. savings bonds regularly where you work. Or if you're not on a payroll, where you bank. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Viola Vaughn and Frederick Tozaire. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Alice Fay appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. This is Bill Foreman wishing good health to all from Rexall. Sunday is fun day on NBC. Stay tuned to this station for the Edgar Burke and Charlie McCarthy Show, which follows immediately. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.